Uh, yeah, thanks, Tim. Um, so yeah, me again. I'm going to talk about containers and the open science pool. Uh, by containers, I specifically mean containers for jobs, because uh, we can also run execution points in containers, but that's a completely separate topic. Um, so this is a feature that we've had for over half a decade now, so I'm going to talk a little bit about how they've worked in the past. Um, we've also done a lot of work over it in the past two years, and we've got plans for the future. So up until about two years ago, uh, so when I say containers in the OS pool, I really mean singularity containers in the OS pool. Condor has had Docker Universe for a long time, but, uh, but uh, running Docker jobs um, requires privileges that none of our uh, uh, pilots had. So uh, really it's just singularity or nothing. Um, and singularity has two kinds of uh, image formats. There's a SIF file, which is a single file and a sandbox, which is a directory tree. Uh, and back in 2017, uh, SIF files were just too large to uh, uh, transfer for tens of thousands of jobs. So uh, they weren't really an option. Also, there were many sites that didn't support running SIF files um, because that also required special privileges. Uh, so instead we used the directory tree format and we distributed them uh, uh, through CVMFS, which is uh, essentially a shared file system for DHDC. Um, and the nice thing about CVMFS is that only the files in the container that the jobs actually use got transferred. So it saved a ton of network. Um, Users can't directly write to the CDMFS area. Instead, what they do is they tell uh, OS, OSG staff um, what image they want to use, and they got to point to an image in a public Docker registry like Docker Hub. Um, and uh, we have an automated cron job that uh, pulls each image that we know about, converts it, adds it to CDMFS. Um, once that's done in the in their submit file, the user sub, uh, uh, specifies path to the the CVMFS directory uh, in their plus single in their singularity image uh, custom attribute. But uh, uh, by 2021, there were a ton of sites out there that had singularity, but we had no way of using it because we couldn't get our images uh, to those sites because they didn't have CVMFS. Um, by 2021, we also had a uh, mature caching infrastructure, um, OSDF, though at the time, I think we were still calling it stash cache. Um, so maybe it was time to revisit use of, use of SIF files uh, since it could solve the transfer problems. Um, but we still had the problem that not all sites supported SIF files. So this gave us essentially a Venn diagram of sites. Some of them could get our images through uh, uh, CVMFS. Some of them could get it through could get it through OSDF and run the SIF files. Um, some of them could do both, but there were, but um, you know, we had to pick and choose based on where we want to where we want to run. Um, and so, how do we how do we handle this, and and how do we handle this while being transparent to the user? Uh, so the computer science way of doing it is to add a layer of interaction. Uh, we still have the cron job that converts. Um, a uh, Docker registry image to a, a Singularity sandbox, but now it also converts to a SIF file and adds it to the OSDF. Uh, the user keeps specifying the CVMFS path in their Singularity images, but once, once their job lands on an EP where um, getting the SIF file via OSDF is better, uh, the EP will download the SIF and, and use it instead of CVMFS, instead of, yeah, instead of CVMFS. Uh, in addition, the EP has um, basically a cache. There's one cache for each EP um, where it keeps the downloaded SIF files. This is both so that the same SIF file doesn't need to get downloaded for multiple jobs running on the same EP, and also to not um, charge the user for the disk space that they did not know they needed. Um, and this is actually has been in production since mid-2021. I'm going to switch tack a bit and talk about implementation. Uh, there's a lot of code here. Um, I'm going to talk about where all of this is run. Uh, and basically, until this year, this ran in a thing called the user job wrapper. For those of you who don't know, the user job wrapper is essentially a script that runs on the EP. It's defined by the EP admin um, that essentially replaces the user's executable. So Condor runs it instead of the user's executable. The wrapper can do some, do some setups do some teardown, and it's responsible for running the, the user's executable uh, in between those two. Um, 
And in fact, it wasn't HD Condor uh, that was launching Singular for these jobs. It was the, the, the job wrapper that the OS pool ran. So um, the problem with job wrappers is that they're essentially a black box to Condor. Um, Condor knows that it's a job wrapper, but um, doesn't know when the wrapper starts, doesn't know when the wrapper ends uh, and the user job begins. Um, doesn't know whether an error comes from the wrapper or the user job. Uh, doesn't know if um, standard out, standard error uh, uh, output comes from the wrapper or the user job. And of course, if Condor doesn't know, Condor doesn't let the user know. Now, a specific problem with the OS pool user job wrapper is Condor definitely didn't know that the, the job was run, running in singularity uh, under its, <laughs> behind its back. Um, and so the user standard error files got polluted with messages from singularity. Condor SSH job didn't work. Again, Condor didn't know that, that um, singularity was running. So Condor landed the SSH session outside of the image instead of inside the image. And also just on a technical debt side, it's 800 lines of bash, which is way too much bash. <laughs> yeah, um, but I wouldn't be talking about it if we didn't fix it. So um, by, by 2023, uh, Condor's, uh, Condor's own singularity support had matured a lot. Um, and in fact, all of the, uh, pretty much all of the features that uh, we needed to launch singularity jobs, Condor could do natively. Um, so uh, we went through the job wrapper, we took an inventory of what needed to be done and when, and we found out that the majority of the tasks could actually be done um, before the pilot even started. They didn't have to be done per job. Um, they could just you know, be done as prep and encoded in Condor config. Uh, and then you know, Condor would take care of using all, all, all the stuff that was detected. Um, the one thing that still needed to be done per job is the fancy downloading stuff um, of fetching the image through either CDMFS or OSDF. And for that, uh, uh, we used uh, what's called the prepare job hook. Now, prepare job hook, um, job hooks are actually not a new technology. They've been in Condor since like 7.6, uh, but I bet most of you uh, uh, haven't heard of them, which is too bad because uh, they're kind of neat. Um, Unlike the, uh, uh, like the user job wrapper runs on each, runs on the execute point uh, defined by the admin runs before each job. Um, unlike the user job wrapper, it runs in a separate stage. Uh, Condor knows when it's the uh, uh, job hook that's being run. Condor knows when it's the user's job that's being run. Um, Condor can distinguish between errors and output between the two and report to the user appropriately. Um, and the way uh, 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 job hooks can, can basically control the execution of the job is they can adjust the job ads that are running on the EP and that are telling Condor what to do. So essentially we um, moved all the uh, uh, download code from the user job wrapper uh, to a prepared job hook that we wrote. Um, still does all the caching, still does all the, you know, decide. Uh, still does all the caching, but after the download is done, it will edit the job ad that the that Condor is looking at and change the uh, uh, singularity, change the location of the singularity image that Condor actually starts up. So all of this is uh, technical behind the scenes details. Uh, now I want to mention how this looks to the user. And um, I guess the bit, uh, we deployed this in February of this year. Um, and for the most part, users shouldn't really see a difference, or at least users shouldn't need to change their behavior. There's, they still supply um, plus singularity in their job files. Um, but uh, one thing they might have noticed if you're checking out their standard error files, hey, there's a lot less spam in there about slash lizard not found, whatever that is. Um, Condor SSH to job now actually works. Um, I can't guarantee it'll work everywhere, but um, I can guarantee that it won't fail everywhere either. Uh, so now I talked about what we did. Now I talk a bit about um, what's, what's up next. Um, container universe, really cool Condor feature. Um, we got it working on, on the APs managed by OSG staff. So these are the ones at UChicago and UW. Um, and we would like, uh, but there are people that have their own access points that still make use of OS pool resources and we don't want to leave them out in the cold. Um, we 
a lot of this work was exploratory. And so we made a lot of uh, uh, Condor sins essentially doing, doing all of this uh, quickly. Uh, for example, management of the EP image cache, we don't. Um, files are kept in there until the pilot expires. Um, and the reason we haven't been bitten by that in the OS pool is because OS pool pilots don't really last all that long, usually no, no longer than 24 hours. The other one is uh, uh, having HC Condor manage the SIF image transfer. Right now it's all being done in stash CP and bash and like half of, half of my previous talk was trying to convince you not to do that. Uh, so we shouldn't do that um, either. But I think the biggest thing is um, this is all OS pool special sauce uh, and we need to spend the time to make it less special because uh, I think this is um, uh, useful by a much larger audience by, by you know other people that run their own DHTC pools and we wanna make sure that they can use it and they can use it easily. Uh, yeah, so that's it, thank you.